Gents, welcome back. Round four, ready to rumble? Ready to go, Cole. Let's go, mate. Let's go. The demand for this one's been really high, and we can see why, because every time you come on the last three times, it's been very instructive about crypto itself. And of course, we're going to talk about the market today, but I also want to dive into the background of Crypto Glasgow, because while we maybe touched on that right at the very start when I had you on in episode 40, which unbelievably was October 2020, which is such a long That's time ago now. Sad. There's so much that's happened between then and now in terms of your business growth, your personal lives. And I think a lot of people who are struggling during this period in the market can maybe relate more to what was happening to you before October 2020, which is obviously somewhere we can go. But before we do that, I think the the elephant in the room is, of course, the the kind of unstable conditions that we've seen in the market and some of the big headlines that we come up to to scare everyone that 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 fud that you educated us about initially don in terms of what that meant fear uncertainty and doubt that has been at an all-time high i would say i don't know if you guys have ever experienced a time as negative as this one uh no i would say the last time was as negative the previous bear market was as negative it is just what happens in these times and we mentioned as well during the bull run on the podcast that when the bear market comes, which is inevitable, it's always inevitable in every market. There's a downturn. That when it does, t- when it does happen, there will be a negative narrative to go along with the price correction. So, the one, the now, the narrative that is caught on the now is all of these, basically companies, private companies, crypto companies that are going bankrupt, etc. That is the negative news story. That's that is the negative narrative that's going along with this this price correction so even without any of those exchanges going bankrupt without any of that the prices were always going to come down anyway like we said back then they're always going to come down but it just happens that it ties in with those exchanges going bankrupt which to be honest when, when we mentioned it on the previous podcast in the bull market it's actually quite a good narrative for the the crypto holder because we were mentioning then that Look, we don't know what the narrative is going to be. Is it going to be the USA bans outlaws crypto? Like, there could be a really bad narrative that's much worse. Personally, I think that private companies going bankrupt is pretty. That's that's a pretty decent uh, it's narrative. Light. Like, it's light. Uh, it's it's light. light. It's it's manageable. So, I'd say, looking back now, it's actually quite a good narrative. Just thinking about it here, that <laughs> is pretty light. It's so not as stressful as it could be. It's, nah. It's stressful if you had funds. I mean, we're, we're talking about FTX. That's like the main or the most recent one. If you had funds on it, you're probably quite stressed. But we didn't. So maybe that's why we're not as stressed. True. But um, in general, like like Dick's saying, like it could have been such a bigger deal. It could have been such a bigger thing that's tied to it. Um the thing that's happening just now with it with Sam Bank Friedman or whatever his full name is, I feel like it's almost getting pinned on him because the exchange was. I mean, what he did was not great. We know that, right? Spending users' funds, buying properties, like um, funding like Biden and stuff. Like, there's a lot of weird stuff going corrupt on in the background, stuff. corrupt stuff going on in the background. But it still could have been a lot worse. Like that is just a shady businessman at the end of the day, using users' funds. So. And the worry for me is that it delegitimizes crypto as a whole. But one of the terms that you've used already, Dick, is private. And you've used shady businessmen there, John. And I think that's important to differentiate between crypto as an asset class and as a a technology between that and the users and the actors that are in that space. It's the same. I've had lots of conversations recently about masculinity and the whole war on masculinity with people talking about toxic masculinity. Masculinity itself is not a toxic concept, but you have toxic actors that can make it seem Mm-hmm. toxic so i view crypto in a in a similar way where you can demonize crypto but actually what you're demonizing is the people that are involved in crypto that have acted unscrupulously to the users with their funds and that's more unsettling for people i think on a, on a personal level i think that's why they're so worried that's the biggest thing like it's people just especially now in this day and age like we won't mention top g himself but you mentioned that in conversation they instantly go for any negative Anything that's negative will get tied to him, forgetting about the positive things. And it's kind of the same with the FTX stuff. It was a positive thing that happened to the exchange and what they were trying to do. Just so happened that the business wasn't as uh, <laughs> as positive as it may seem. So, yeah, like I said, this day and age, people like, like to grab onto things like the masculinity stuff. It's light on the offset, but you get the, the, the kind of small group that will speak the loudest. Just for those as well that don't know, the the whole FTX saga is basically a private company, a crypto exchange, so a place where you can go and buy and sell cryptocurrency. So 
people were using that exchange. It was the biggest exchange in America. I think it was actually bigger than Coinbase, which was the, the main exchange in America. Um, so it was huge. They sponsored absolutely everything. They were like, I think you can you can tie it to like, I don't know if you remember, RBS, like 15 years ago, they sponsored everything, everything, Formula Six One. Nations, the rugby. You yeah. name it, the yeah. RBS sponsored it. That was like FTX. They had the FTX arena, like everything was FTX. So it was this giant brand that was built in America where you could buy and sell cryptocurrency. And turns out that that, brand that exchange was i don't know how you best explain but it just wasn't run correctly it was run fraudulently mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it was a fraudulent exchange it just so happened to be the biggest exchange in the world and that's why they were sponsoring all these they were spending so much money on sponsorships because it was actually fraudulent activity that was happening so that's why they could spend that money so basically what happened that exchange is went bankrupt it's lost billions of users funds so because that's happened, there's this big negative news story in crypto. So the people that aren't familiar with FTX or crypto in general, they just hear there's been four billion in cryptocurrency that's been lost. They don't know that it's a it's just a regular business that's lost four billion. It's not crypto itself that's yep. the issue. So I think for us it's it's, as Don says, it's light. It's it's actually positive. If you lost money in the exchange, it'd probably be a different story. Would be would be speaking differently of it but I think in that term it could have been so much worse mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing a business fail rather than crypto fail crypto's fine bitcoin's still running it's been running every day crypto's still f totally fine no issues with crypto so I think looking back now it's actually pretty positive this this new negative narrative to come along with this bear market it's light. So. Is this one versus potentially another one? Because China bans Bitcoin comes around all the time, but yeah. maybe a more serious one would be the USA. Yeah. It was. That would worry a lot more people. I actually find it interesting that a lot of my more bearish friends who have kind of, they associate crypto with me because we've spoken about it in the podcast. I share it in my Instagram stories. I'm quite, I'm quite pro it. Like people know that I have a, a, a chunk of my investments are in that space. They are almost reveling in the news that it's, being delegitimized more so. And I find it funny because I think that's, it's been at its peak now because of that, because they're seeing users funds being used illegally. But I find it funny that that is in relation to how a private company has dealt with it, not how the asset class itself, because people have always tried to poke fun at the asset class, but they're not used. They're not actually able to do that, even with this news, in my opinion. They can't. That's the, the whole point of crypto becoming a thing and the blockchain becoming a thing was that you can't point the finger and say, oh, it's that. Well, let's pull up the records because it's all held in blockchain. Like everything's like legit as legit can be. Um, it's just people just like to talk. Um, oh, I knew it was going to happen. I told you not to get into that crypto stuff. You didn't know nothing. You just didn't know how to get into it or didn't know enough about it. Therefore, it was bad in your eyes. And now it's been demonized by those same people or your friends who might be bearish now. I bet you in 2021, they were, how do I buy it? Like, what do I buy? And we, again, it's, it's different for us because we've seen it all the way from a previous bear market, all the way through that bull market, personally, as investors, but also as Crypto Glasgow, as the business, as the members, as the community that we've, we've got. We've got people that have came, that have gone, like bullish, bearish, and people that are sticking by us, because yes, we're bearish, and we're like, ah, the, the market's not as good just now, but they know. Like, it's, it's an emotional thing. We always say this. It's an emotional thing. Fix your emotions, and don't worry about the market. Deal with your emotions. I think I'm relatively calm because even during that kind of euphoric period where I was st first getting involved in crypto, there were still dips and corrections. Yeah. Like it, it's great that we've got this record in the archives. And I was talking to you about the beauty of long form content, like some of the messages I get about episodes that were two years ago. We've got this catalog of three three podcasts, which combines about four and a half hours talking about some of the different things that were happening in the market and you guys were saying i think when bitcoin hit its all-time high in april 21 you were like just wait for the correction and everyone was like no no no, it's going to 100 you were like no no, no there's going to be a correction will come and it'll be scary and it went down to like 30 odd mm -hmm. and everyone panicked and you were like well we did say the big correction and then it went back up again to think it hit 64 again or something like that which is amazing but you had been over the course before to say there's going to be hiccups and bumps and that scared me at the time but now when there's bumps and on this roller coaster i'm a little bit more calm because i've seen some of them already and i just believe that this one will just be a longer potentially deeper trough before we see the next high i think that's why you are calm is because you've been prepared for this for 
a year and a half, two years, you've al- you've always been of the understanding that this is what happens because we've discussed crypto for years personally and we've always says it to you like, look, <laughs> the market's up now, but just wait, it's coming back down. Like, don't worry about it, it's coming back down. So I think when you are aware of that, when it happens, it's it's much easier to to get by on and especially with the current bear market has been tied to this private company issue. That is that's gold for us. Like, because if it was tied to something more government related, then it could be a bit more sticky. Then, like, even we start losing faith. That's that's just what happens in the last bear market. We would start to lose faith. We'd hear bad stories, and then I would say to Don, "Oh, I don't know about this." And then Don would be like, "No, look, it's fine. That that's how you're supposed to feel. It's emotions." Then Don would be feeling, "Oh, I don't know about this." I would be like, "Look, mate, it's fine. That's how you're supposed to feel. It's emotions." So it does get you sometimes when the stories are bad. It does get you, but it's only for a short period of time. So now with this with this narrative, it's actually quite good. So here's hoping that that is the main narrative they run with because if it is, then we're on to a winner. It's, it should be... A lot more people should uh, be able to write it out, whereas if they're challenging the fundamentals or the, the, the legal aspects, yeah, but that pretty more the way the, the way this narrative gets worse is like contagion in the market. So with FTX going bankrupt, etc., that then leads on to th- this company going bankrupt, this company going bankrupt. So there's always more and more money being lost and more people losing funds due to these, these bad issues. So that is how this narrative gets worse. From a zoomed out perspective, it's it's a shame that people will lose money. But from a zoomed out perspective on the crypto industry as a whole, it's actually not the the worst. So, if that's the only narrative we get, then bring it, it's bring that, it on. Bring the bottoms it on. in. The bottoms <laughs> in. <laughs> the bottoms in. I, I I did see some charts that were indicating that in a four year cycle, this does look like we're we're we're, we're near the bottom. But that doesn't mean that we're seeing an Im- immediate upturn, which I think no. some people misread. So on that point, so the previous cycles normally last four hundred and something days. 420 days whatever it may be we're currently like 600 odd days into this one so we're like you mentioned just before this is a bit more kind of like it's going to last a bit longer already has been the all-time high was like november 21 so that's over a year already um and even like the altcoin market topped before that as way well, before so, that. so we're already and plus then the bitcoin havens coming up so it's we're, we're actually over halfway back to what we were like the f- nearly the first time we spoke. I mean, again, going back to that first podcast, we spoke about the Bitcoin having, make it to the having, make it to the having. That was like our key thing. That's back. what got us through the, the really bad times. Uh, and that's, Make it to the having. And that's almost where we're coming into now because we're in 2023. 2022 was a terrible year for the market price-wise. The emotions have been even worse the past few months because of FTX, BlockFi, Celsius, Crypto.com, they've all been having things, whatever they may be, whether it's a scam, whether it's going bust, whether it's fraudulent activity, there's something been going wrong with all these big centralised platforms over the past six months, which can signal bottoms. We're not saying the bottom's in, go buy it, because realistically no one knows when the bottom's in, that's kind of the whole point of it. Don't try and time the market, spend time in the market. So... It goes back to, like I said, the point that I made at the start of this there was the time we spent already is over 600 days. It's normally around 400 days. Buckle up because it's we've still got a few more days to go, put it that way, but it's looking it's looking good, especially with this this big narrative. I think, the, I think a common criticism of people that are crypto maximalist or extremely enthusiastic about crypto is that you would be almost delusionally positive. But every time that you guys come on here and speak in longer form, Obviously, people can clip up a 15-second clip on Instagram stories and all that, but, oh, they, they, do, they don't understand the seriousness of this. But you're saying it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows. In fact, over the course of you guys being invested in crypto since, what, 2017, more years than not have been fallow with two years of profit-taking. Oh, definitely. And they were, but those two years outweighed the fallow years, so that's the, that's the premise of this market. Yeah. It wasn't even as long as two years, no. like, realistically. It moved up for two years, but the actual good part of it where all the money was made a yeah. couple of months uh, <laughs> if you're lucky i, I said like, that actually on a members stream last year of ju- at, at like the, the kind of main hype of the cycle that if you're getting into crypto now understand that say at least 80 percent of the time you spend in crypto the market will be either going down or sideways i think it was actually 90 percent. say 90 percent of the time you're in crypto the market will be going down or sideways 10 percent of the time you'll be in crypto it'll be going up in profit so if you understand that 
before you get into crypto or right at the start, it makes it easier because a lot of people join crypto and they think, I'm just going to make so much money so fast. It's just money, 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 profit, 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 but it's not. It's 10% of your time you make profit, but in that 10%, you're making, in that 10% of time, you're making thousands of percent profit, tens of thousands of percent profit. So that's why it's worth it. That's why it's staying through all those bad times because when you do make the profit in that short period of time, it's enough profit to change your life. Like it's changed anybody that we know that's invested in crypto and it's stayed in it for over three years. It's changed their lives. Everybody we know that's been in it over three years, it changed their life. So that's that's key. If, if you can understand that only 10% of the time you spend in crypto will be going up and the rest, you just need to grin and bear with the fact that it's going down or it's so boring and going sideways. Like the last three months, Bitcoin's been 16K. It's not moved from 16K. So if you if you understand that, like you understood when you first get into crypto, that that's just what happens. It, it's, it's, a, it's a breeze. Just ignore the negative news stories. and It's, it's funny. We're definitely going to get right into bitcoin during this discussion but could you imagine that you told me that i could buy an average in say i was averaging in every month into bitcoin at, at 16 and that it's been at 69, 69 before yeah. any other asset class you'd probably be like okay well yep. that makes sense to me <laughs> but at the moment this this moment in time everyone's like no oh, that's 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 too risky yeah and, and people want to buy lower that's another thing as well and again it's just all stuff we've, we've said before but when the prices are, are high, people say, oh, I wish it was low so I could buy more. And <laughs> but as we says, like, that's great. See that mindset? See what you just said there? Keep it, hold on to it. Keep it and hold on to it. Because when the price goes down, you pro your mindset will change and you'll say, oh, I'll, I'll probably just wait till it goes lower. It's going mm -hmm. down, it'll just keep going lower. It'll keep going lower. So it's like people want lower prices. Then you get lower prices and they're like, no, nah, but I want lower again. Aye. And it's, it, the, it works the same when it's going up. Like people want higher prices. The prices go from $3,000 Bitcoin to $69,000 Bitcoin. No, but I want 100K, I want 200K, I want 300K. So it's like, you're never really happy. And that's why we, our thing is take profit. You need to take profit because when it's on the table, take it, take the win. So it works the same both ways when the market's going up, when the market's going down. Before we put a pin in Bitcoin for now, um, can we talk about some of the other things that you mentioned there, Don, that were like very negative about the market? We had other exchanges folding. We had crypto.com acting um, dodgily would be the, the would be a polite way of d d describing that. That's just more unsettling news and it seems like it just compounds at this period in time. So it's kind of wave after wave hitting you, impacting your resilience and your ability to keep remaining, having faith within the, within the asset class. A lot of it as well though is these exchanges we've noticed this a lot more is the reason they act dodgy or they act up sometimes can be you think about it like this right you've got a million users on your platform that invest millions of pounds you don't expect them all to try and take that money out at the one time a bank roll that a bank would happen it's happened in the past so if all these users try and take their money out at the same time nine times out of ten they don't have like the exchanges don't have that money same as a bank doesn't have that money they're using that money to uh, the big thing in crypto at the moment is earn. So like a yield, same again in a bank, where you'd have a savings account where they're using your money to, in crypto, they'll be trading it to try and make more money. They'll be lending it out to try and make more money. If all these people try and take all that money out, it's not there. They don't have that money. Which is why we, we like Swissbog as well, that they don't do that. They haven't got the licenses to do that. So that's why we've been such big fans of Swissbog this full time so when you deposit funds in Swissbog they're held in a segregated wallet which is specific to you only it's only your wallet in FTX it's like into a big pool and then they just spend it essentially mm -hmm. with Swissbog it's not like that it's held in they've essentially got the same technology as a ledger so that's like a it's like a hardware wallet for those that don't know it's a, a place where you can keep your crypto secure so in Swissbog Every user has got an individual wallet. So even if Swissbog was hacked, it's no central point of authority that can be hacked and then all the funds are emptied out there. They're all segregated. So if there is a hack, it might be one wallet that's hacked. If that's even, I don't even know if it is possible to hack the way that these wallets are set up. But if one wallet, if Swissbog are hacked, it's one wallet and then they can refund that one hack. So 
that's why we we like Swissbog. They don't gamble with users' funds. They don't trade users' funds. The only way they 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 trade users' funds essentially is in if you opt in to like a yield program, and then they'll get you the highest yield possible for your fund. So you can opt into that service if you want. Um, so that's that's why we like Swissborg so much. You have no idea how relieved I was when Swissborg sent me the email with the breakdown in terms of conditions after FTX because people were flapping because I don't think many people that were invested in FTX understood what was happening with their funds. Yep. Put it that way. I don't think many people that were involved with Celsius understood what was happening with funds. They just thought the yield on this or whatever they were getting was really good. Probably too good to be true. And yeah. that's as it turned yeah. out. Because some of the yields on Swissborg at times, and we spoke on the podcast when you were a... Uh, like a premium member or like higher up in Swissborg in terms of the amount of um, CHSB that you held or what you had staked you could get some incredible yields but those have calmed down as the markets calmed down whereas I think in other exchanges those were continuing to pump up in a situation that that just wasn't physically possible so I think knowing where your money is stored and how it's how it's being used is vitally important but I think a lot of people went in blind during the euphoria that we've spoken about in the past 18 months yeah because Swissborg as well like they, they said recently that they lost out on millions or billions they they lost out on during 2020, 2021, where they could have been using users' funds, they could have been doing all these things, and they missed out on millions or billions. But now it's paid off. That's what they're saying. Our business is, 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 is thriving just now while all of them go bankrupt mm -hmm. because we, we never done what they were doing. So at the time, they might have been like, oh, we're losing out on billions here. But as time moves on it's it's the best thing that could have happened for them what do you say when you get accused on instagram of being shells for swiss oh people? we get it all the time bring it on like it's, it's cool we are we are we, we're and the biggest fans we, literally and we, and we were since we started using them we've mentioned this before as well like we promoted swiss Bog for free for months because it was the best app mm -hmm. like we are out there as crypto educators people need to know where to buy crypto so we need to tell them where to buy crypto like Look, use this place because if we if we if we just left left people to their own devices, like members of our community or followers or whatever, then they go use FTX, they go use Crypto.com, they go use all these bogus exchanges. So if we get called the Swiss bug shell, good, we are, we like, are, we are, we are, we're, literally, like, we are. We're the, obviously, we're going to recommend the best place to buy. One of the key factors that people forget, and I've got every everyone that's um, a Swiss bug user has an affiliate link, so they can refer that's right. people. Deck referred me back in the day. I've referred lots of people through um, conversations or through through Instagram. Like in the post, description. Post, post the link, that's it. <laughs> we'll be invoicing um, you. We'll take a cut of that as well, actually. But <laughs> my my money's in Swissborg as well. So if I'm shilling something, it's because my money's in it. And so is yours, which yeah. people would probably would neglect the fact that you guys are crypto investors first and foremost alongside educators. That's one of the biggest points I want to make. Just I try and make it if we do a live or whatever. We're just investors. We just built this business and became what you now see as Crypto Glasgow and the community that we've built. End of the day, we are investors. We're sharing our investment journey and people are either following that journey or they're not. People like to find a negative in something to bring it up because it's a good topic for them. It's easy to speak negatively because people go down a rabbit hole. So the Swissborg stuff, like Dex said, we are the biggest fans of Swissborg. The reason for that is because, well, we used them for so long and we still use them and we will continue to use them because unlike FTX, unlike Crypto.com, unlike any other of these platforms that have went tits up, shall we say, they haven't and they continue to thrive throughout the worst bear market that we've seen. And also as well with Swissborg, like, what we've said previously is that see if Swiss Bog does do something that we don't like, we'll be the first to say it. Yep. And we'll be the first to go against it. We'll, we'll say if, if Swiss Bog, so our thing with Crypto.com, we says Crypto.com is a good card. Use that exchange. We, we like to look at, we like the things that they're doing. Then things transpired and they got hacked. They gaslit their users. They stole users' funds. They've done really shady things and things with no ethics. As soon as that happened, we were against them. Avoid them. Publicly. Don't use them publicly. Don't use them. That they're shady. Like so, they done that negative thing. We went against it. If Swissbog done something, the same will happen to them, and we'll move on to something else. So, just because we're big fans doesn't mean that they're doesn't mean that they're 
untouchable. Untouchable. Everything you say has a has has a, has a date attached to it as well. I think a lot of people attach people to things that they've said in the past when things were certain circumstances. I see it particularly like in historical context. So like language that was used in the in the in the nineteenth century, the twentieth century. You're like, oh, if somebody used that word nowadays, they'd be cancelled. And you're like, well, of course they would if they used it in twenty twenty three. They'd be cancelled. Yeah. But back then, that was accepted language. Your granny probably said it as well. So don't don't, don't get annoyed. So in the same way that you guys put stock in Swiss at this moment in time that's because of the facts that you have available on the time of recording yep. rather than a forever a forever recommendation yeah exactly it would be a different story if we were recommending because we could have FTX if we were recommending crypto.com getting affiliates and doing we, we could have done all that so easy but the way we work the business and way we've always worked is we trust someone and we give them our trust until something goes wrong like Dex says we'll call it out publicly or call it how we see it but for what we require from the crypto industry, Swissborg seems to fit that bill to a T and continues to tick the boxes that we as investors want to see. Therefore, we're going to tell you because we want the best for anyone that follows us and puts trust in us. We want the best for that we person. Give that back. We want to give back and say, by the way, use this exchange because that's where we use and we've done the due diligence. We know this far that it's a legit exchange. And you put your money where your mouth is in one way, which is investing through the app, but also we had Swissborg Series A recently and you guys put your money where your mouth is from that perspective. What was that? So Swissborg Series A, <laughs> and I, I mentioned this today actually to the members, like CG Pro members, that I didn't like the way Swissborg marketed this campaign. I thought it was terrible. I told Swissborg that as well. I think it was really confusing the way they marketed it. So maybe I can explain better for Swissborg. Which point, there's a point proven. Like, we're Swissborg's biggest fans and we'll always hype them up. But if they're doing something, not wrong, but maybe not doing something to the best of what we believe they can do, knowing how we see the community react, Dex the first, you see the group chat. I think you're Dex very direct. First. And I, I've benefited from Dex feedback over the years. Dex backed me continuously from when Cam Bro was Cam Bros on, on Instagram back in 2017. Dex was, was giving me feedback the whole time in terms of, have you ever considered doing this? Or I saw you did this kind of graphic, that was okay, but... You could do it better. So you, 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 you've always had a quick, a, a calm, critical voice when you want to. It's mm -hmm. it's good, but it's just, it's funny when you get in a group chat with the CFO of Swissborg and Dex telling him, you should be doing this. It's, <laughs> it's legit, it's legit info and it's it only makes sense. People I, I trust, obviously. I'm not out there telling everybody how to live their life, uh, but if I'm, if I'm close to you, I'll... I'll I'll give you honest. That's what you need. That's what yeah. I want. I want people to be honest. You don't want open. just yes men in your corner. Aye. You guys probably wouldn't be in the position you're in if you were just surrounded by clapping seals. Yeah. Exactly. But it is, it's just funny sometimes the, the group so, chat. Sorry, carry on. So, <laughs> so the Swissbog Series A, so essentially what it is, is Swissbog is giving people the opportunity to invest in the actual company, Swissbog itself. So Swissbog is a crypto exchange, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a company. So they're giving people a chance to invest in the company itself. So me personally, I am a big fan of CHSB, which is the crypto coin of Swissbog. And the reason I'm such a big fan of that is to give myself exposure to Swissbog. I see Swissbog as a, a great brand, a great technology, a great app. And I want to expose myself to that financially to go along with it on the journey. When they do well, I do well financially as well. Mm -hmm. So I've exposed myself to Swissbog through investing in their coin, but now with Series A, they're giving you an opportunity to invest directly in the company Swissbog, so to buy stock of the company itself. So that's what that's what that is, and basically, it's still it's still private essentially at this at this stage. So they're they're calling it a public sale. Technically, it is still private because it's only available to Swissbog users at this current stage. So it's a it's a private round investment in Swissbog itself to buy equity in the company. And basically, what they're doing is they're raising funds to they're raising funds to invest in the company. So they're going to enter the the crypto debit card space. They're going to invest in banking licenses. The the money they're raising, they're investing in the company to take it to that next stage because Swissbog was just a small startup now it's it's scale it was a scale up now it's like a it's moving into a, a ma an enterprise a massive enterprise so they need to raise funds to do that they they're just continually building that's what we love as well during this bear market they've the amount of things they've introduced the the, the different products they've introduced during a bear market 
that's what we want to see as investors. So basically you can invest in Swissbog itself, the stock for the future. Then they're going to go, then they possibly will go public or they might sell the company to a bigger company that's able to take Swissbog again to the next level because it's just, they're just gradually building and building. So yeah, they're raising funds to invest in bank licenses, crypto debit cards and just grow the, the company even bigger, get it in more countries worldwide as and well. And that was a more traditional investment than a, a crypto yeah. coin it's an actual yeah. stock a share yeah. so, so to speak but you believe in the company so you're happy to be exposed uh, to that. exactly because that's that's what the main reason i was in bet like chsb have says it before except from bitcoin that's my number one project and the only reason it's number one project is because i i like the the company swissbog so much and that's the only way that i could invest in swissbog is through their own coin but now i can invest directly in the company mm-hmm. so when this came up i was personally i was buzzing because I, I was such a big fan of CHSB just to invest in Swissbog, so now I can invest directly in Swissbog. Yeah, I completely understand that, and I think it just shows that you're also diversifying your investment portfolio, albeit it's a crypto company, it's also a, a stock and share, and I know you'd moved away from that for a little bit of time, but that's enough to kind of bring you back into that market to have a bit of interest in a traditional share. Exactly, exactly. You're doubling down, essentially. Mm-hmm. You're covering the crypto aspect of it, and you're also covering the stock aspect of yeah, it that's well explained but yeah. it's doubling down on swissborg again there's more fanboy material if you if you want if anyone <laughs> wants to run with that we're doubling down um yeah so i'm excited and, to and see and your request and folder and again, after this. Yeah, we're, yeah. We, we're totally open as well we've mentioned this before is swissborg isn't like entirely bulletproof anything can happen anything can happen to any company that you invest in so nothing's certain and i know that so Swissbog is great. It's the the best crypto product I've ever used, but that doesn't mean it's it, it's it's bulletproof. So you you need to keep that in mind. But any investment, if even if you're investing in Amazon, something can happen negatively to Amazon, and they can they can fail. So in fact, just seen today, like Amazon are losing twenty thousand jobs or whatever it is. So like anything negative can happen to a company. So but as Don says, we're doubling down because we like it. You need to. As investors, you need to invest in something. So when the, the opportunity come up to invest in Swissbog, the company, pff, take, Sign me take up. my money. I <laughs> completely understand. Yeah, you, you, you make strong points about why you're, why you're so invested. I mentioned at the very top of this podcast that we had briefly discussed your Genesis story in terms of getting into crypto, but I really want to dive into that during, during the discussion when we're, when, we're, when we're back together. When did you two first get introduced to crypto? I'm probably better leading this story. So for anyone that hasn't heard, I call it a boring story, but it's actually a really interesting story. My initial hearing of it was a way back in 2013. Worked for Santander. I'll try and keep this short because it's been said about 20,000 different times. Oh, but the Campbell Very true, very true. So we uh, I worked in Santander, worked in there just a personal banker, didn't really know much about the modern world at the time, just knew that working banks make good money. So I was sold. Within that period of time working there, uh, there was a guy who we worked with, can't remember his name, I think it might have been Darren, after hearing other things, but he was obsessed with Bitcoin. 2013, bear in mind, right? Obsessed with Bitcoin, I had no clue what it was. Another guy in one of the teams was obsessed with buying gold, silver, precious metals. So every single lunchtime, there would be an argument between Bitcoin and buying gold, or whatever it may be at that time. Again, me not having a clue. I just wanted to do overtime and buy like G Star jeans and like the latest. Like I didn't even know back then what was the end designer, but that's what my focus was. These guys were talking about it, so I didn't really care much about it. I just thought this guy was quite weird and wondering what are you doing with that Bitcoin? Because obviously Silk Road was a thing back then. You could buy and sell things that weren't so uh, accepted. So we always thought the worst. Fast forward a few more years. So I done nothing back then. Fast forward a few more years. Similar type of story, someone in my in my next employment mentioned crypto. And what happened in that time was he had bought some at a silly price, don't know how low it was, but a silly price, and was able to pay his mum's mortgage off, essentially buy the house outright with the profits he had made from his small investment in Bitcoin. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute. So I told him that story. And I told, I again, told Deck this story. And I'm thinking, there must be something in this. I'll definitely do it. I'll definitely do it. Didn't do anything with it. Then spoke to that same guy in my work and finally made the jump to 
actually look into it a bit more. As soon as Don told me that somebody paid the mum's mortgage off with crypto, I was like, I'm in. That's the thing. I'm I'm doing that. Because obviously, we're, you, I think any, you're always looking for something, the next thing, something to make money off. So when Don said that, because I'd heard about it previously as well, just uh, as Don says, it was more the Silk Road stuff, like people were doing dodgy things with it. So you weren't really looking into it as much. But as soon as Don says somebody paid the mum's mortgage off, I was like, no, nah, that's it. Like, I'm getting in on that. That's uh, that's that's exactly that's it. that's how the kind of the it was real. It, it was tangible. About. It wasn't I, just buying dodgy stuff off the internet. It was no that person bought his mum's house. So it's like no, that's real. Um, that's that's the one. It Made clicked. huge huge returns on an asset. Yeah, uh, it clicked. The boy ended up never getting back into it, which is again I think wow. the craziest thing. Uh, so wow. he, he was in it, done it, and was like cool, which is fair. But the reason for that, I think, is because he didn't know about crypto. He didn't know about Bitcoin. Right. Like, he didn't learn. He hadn't, like, studied it. He knew what it was enough to make the money from it. So I think that's why he was like, nah, cool, made my money, I'm done. Which you have to respect. But, I mean, I haven't spoke to him in years since then. But maybe he's back into it now. I don't know. But at the time, he was like, no, I've look, I've won. I've took the win, as we say. I've took the win. Um, but yeah, so it's so, so from then I passed that message on to Dick, and then we were both just like, Eureka moment, this, there's, something, there's something here. And you both started investing pretty soon after that? But, yeah, away. pretty much straight away. I think it's because we'd already kind of heard of it. It was easier for us to then make the investment. Second or third time round's easier. 100% is. Defo. Defo. What were you buying when you first started? XRP. XRP, of course. Bitcoin as well. Mm -hmm. That's and, another. And altcoins, just everything. Aye. Aye. It was difficult back then because... In fact, no, not Bitcoin for me, actually. It, it was altcoins. It was just altcoins, really, because... I don't, I don't know what it was. I think because it was like cheaper. You felt mm. like you were getting more for your investment, so it made more... Again, we didn't know that much. Uh, un uneducated. I, I had just heard two stories of someone making... Well, someone investing and then someone making money. So I didn't know about I want to own a Bitcoin or I want to own multiple Bitcoin. It was just... Crypto, give me some. Oh, How do I get it? And as Don says as well, so like the when the price is lower, it's more attractive to people. Because you can accumulate more of it. Yeah, exactly. So during that time at the start, I actually bought £100 of Dogecoin. <laughs> so I bought £100 of Dogecoin. I bought it on my my mum's PC at the time. It was 2017, I think. I bought it on my mum's PC. Basically lost it instantly, didn't know where it was, didn't know where it was stored because it wasn't, crypto wasn't as accessible in 2017, especially for altcoins, like there was Coinbase, but there's only a few coins on it. Like now you can buy thousands of coins from anywhere, but back in 2017, it was much more sticky to buy things. So I bought $100, $100 I think it was, of Dogecoin on my mum's PC. The, the price just went down. It, it was worth like a tenner at one point or a, a few pound at one point. So basically, I just binned it. I'm like, I, I don't know where that Dogecoin is. I'll just leave it. Fast forward two years, that Dogecoin was worth $40,000. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I need to find that Dogecoin. <laughs> so oh, my mum still, I think my mum had a new PC, but she'd transferred her old things onto it, but I couldn't find it. So I, I so there's, there's, a, there's a, a few lessons in that. One, like, make sure you, you keep all your, like, your wallet addresses. It's a bit easier now because your, your crypto's on an exchange or it's on Swissbog. You know where it is or it's on a ledger. But back then it was on, the wallet was, like, in your PC. A lot of people had Bitcoin and it was, like, stored in their PC in a wallet. And then they would bin the, the PC and they would lose all the Bitcoin. So the lesson is, like, keep keep your, your passwords, etc. But also, that's what I mean with, you can make life-changing money like in a in a short space of time. So I invested a hundred dollars and it was worth forty thousand dollars. That's life changing. That's a deposit for a mortgage. That's a car. That's whatever it is. That's pay off all your debt for a hundred dollars. And that's that happens again now. That was 2017. It happened 2013. Happened 2020. And it's going to happen again 2023, 2024. It will happen again because it, it's rinse repeat cycles. It always happens. So people like in CG Pro, like who are discord community like people are in there investing like a lot of money and some people are investing small amounts of money but just to reinforce the message for people that invest in small we get messages saying i'm only investing 20 dollars or 100 dollars is it even worth it 
yes, it's definitely worth it in the long term because I invested the hundred dollars and it was worth forty thousand dollars. So if you're investing even more than that, a few hundred pound, that's the sort of gains that's in this market. Tens of thousands of percent gains. So the lesson is don't think that you need to invest thousands to make a lot of money in crypto. It's we have brutal times of minus ninety nine percent, but the flip side of the coin is we get ten thousand percent gains. So absolutely, and if we can find Mrs. Kelly's old PC, oh no, she still got <laughs> it. I think the the next bull run, I'll I'll look into it deeper. At, at that time, it was a bull market; everything was popping off anyway. And I basically like I'm rich anyway. <laughs> uh, it would have been nice to find a aye, square forty grand. Aye, I'm sure, now, did you not like hire people to try and find I, I did, it? All I, did, that, I, did. Like, I was I was on Fiverr trying to get people to like private investigators <laughs> and, uh, to, to try and find it um but yeah i never got it but again that'll probably be down at i don't know what it'll be worth now it'll probably worth a few hundred dollars now it'll be worth almost mm. nothing now that's how that's how much it can go up but goes down as well so hundred dollars forty thousand dollars now it'll be two hundred dollars sounds, like, sounds like my portfolio <laughs> <laughs> and mine to be fair <laughs> who was encouraging you during this period you had each other you used your mum's PC, so she must have understood it to some extent. Who was a supportive voice during this period? You already said it, each other. There was no one, no one really, back in my, bear in mind 2017, 2018, no one cared. Well, no one knew to care what crypto was. So my story is when I worked for Deloitte in the bank, my, my role was a, a process specialist to try and fill in, fill in a little bit, was running about an office after 200 plus people coming to me for information essentially if they were struggling with their work or their casework or whatever it may be they come to me as a process specialist so every opportunity that i got because i was at people's desks hundreds of times a night my first point not my first point of call by the way have you heard of crypto <laughs> but within the conversation i always try to fit it in somehow and it didn't mean much to me back then i was just buzzing about this new thing that i was into so i was telling people because i knew what the potential was but like I said, no one really knew enough to care about it back then. So realistically, no one encouraged us other than ourselves and what we were watching at the time on YouTube, realistically. Because um, our parents still didn't really know much about it for the first kind of few years until we started making a bit of money and be like, look, it, it works. Then they were interested. But back 2017, 2018, like I was personally known as just that weird guy that ran about the office speaking about Bitcoin. Um I mean, shout out to the people that listen to me because I do know there was a few in there that made a good bit of money from my passive comments back then. So shout out to them. But um, yeah, no one really encouraged you back then. Who was the most heavily discouraging around you? Who was really trying to stop you? No, nobody again. either. I, I no. don't think no, nah. because we only really, well Don told like kind of people in his work etc. But I never really mentioned it to a lot of people. I only mentioned it to friends. Um, and none like I think my friends took my judgment on it, but they weren't interested. Like I said to them, look, this is what happened. This is what happened last time. It cycles. Like I, I'd learned a, a bit by then. And I was I was explaining it, and they they understood it, and they're like, oh, that sounds good. And I'm like, you should put a bit in. And they're like, nah, nah, it's yeah. alright. So it's like they understood. They're like, I right, you do you, but they they never says, oh, don't do that. Nobody ever says. I don't think, don't invest. I don't remember anyone really Nobody, being nobody encouraged, nobody discouraged. Um, it was, we were kind of in it alone, to be fair. It's interesting because I see people rubbish, people doing things that are different now. So whether that's starting a, an Instagram, starting a podcast, uh, doing a side hustle, flipping stuff on uh, eBay or doing Amazon drop shipping, whatever yeah. it is. People are unsettled, particularly in the West of Scotland, I think, by somebody doing something different. And quite often they make fun until there's proof or validation of concept or success. Found it massively with the podcast. At this point in time, there's people that are getting back in touch that definitely haven't listened earlier on and now they're like, oh, I love the podcast. And you're like, well, I could have done with you earlier on supporting yeah. me because you knew about it because it's people that you maybe had like, connections with. But I find maybe you see that more with actually crypto Glasgow than you do with your own investing. Aye, de definitely. Yeah. We've seen it that way, like especially in 2021, that's when everybody was contacting you. What's this crypto thing, mate? Like, what's this crypto <laughs> thing? Like everybody like was contacting you about it because the price was up. But again, like you tell them about it when the price is down, they're not interested. It, it's understandable. Like it's totally understandable if prices are down 
it's pretty boring. I understand why people aren't interested. It's fair, but I don't know. I think if if I gave if I gave somebody my time enough to to let them know personally, I think they should look into it enough and they should actually take it on board because I'm actually taking my time to tell you about it. Like I, like I messaged you about it. I never spoke to many people about crypto. As I says, it was only friends. Um, so, aye, that's what I would say with that. I think it's easier now, it goes back to a point I made with the, it's easier to speak about negative things. And maybe it's jealousy as well. That, I mean, you've had loads of successful people on this podcast that have probably the same things happened. They sounded crazy because it's like a new thing they've done. Then they became successful or whatever you want to call it. Then they get a bit of backlash. But then people are like, actually, how did you do that? I'm interested. And like you said, again, with someone with your podcast, you could have been here at the start. You were aware of it. At least take the time out. And again, what Dex is, at least take the time. If someone's taking the time to give you their time to explain something that's new that you don't know about, it's rude not to acknowledge that. At least Google it. At least have one look at it. And see if it's not for you, it's not for you. But then don't go at it and think, oh, no, it's rubbish. I looked at it, it's rubbish. Scam, this, people lose money. Like, don't come at it like that if you haven't spent time, like, understanding it. And, if and if you didn't experience that in your investing journey, when you started the page as uh, Crypto Glasgow together, did you experience people poking fun, thinking it was unusual at that point in time? Again, oh, really? no. not, do you know, the probably the, the time it did happen is when prices were up, so everyone's your best friend when prices were up. When things started in the market to come down a bit, or if we said, oh, we think this is going to happen, if that thing didn't happen to the same expectations as what we had, then it would turn. But again, it, it kind of goes back to what we always talk about in its emotions. It's people's emotions run so high when it comes to finances. Whether they like it or not, it's... Money rules the world, we know that. Whether you love working for money or whether you're, you're just happy working your kind of your, your nine to five or whatever it may be, everyone's emotions are very much tied to a financial state or a financial state of mind. So that's probably when we did see some sort of thing. That we, when, we, when we made the, the page, again, no one really knew what was going on with crypto. Same back when we were speaking about it personally. No one really knew. We've helped encourage the positive message and people understanding it through Jota starting the page. So people couldn't kind of point the finger and be like, oh, what you was doing, that's weird, because what they didn't know. What prompted you guys to start the page? Um, Dema it, this, demand. This, this, yeah. was, this was mid-2020, probably. Demand, demand. Yeah. We just we, we had the idea that, so essentially we were in crypto for years at this point, and what we were waiting on, as we mentioned before, was the having. So in short, for anyone that doesn't know, the, the having is when the... The Bitcoin supply that is mined is cut in half, so the the so the amount of Bitcoin that are made every day is halved. So that halves the the supply that are created every day. So when that happens, it causes a supply shock, and with a supply shock, with Bitcoin being a supply and demand asset, it has an effect on its price. If the the demand stays the same or the demand gets greater, the price gets greater. So we knew this in advance. We were in crypto for years, buying it in the anticipation of the having, because we know what's coming next after the having. It's money time, <laughs> eventually. So Wait, Lambo. So basically, we were at the stage, we've been in crypto for two and a half years, we know what's up next. Or, yeah, two and a half years, we know what's up next. The money is up next. So this market's about to explode. We know about this market because we've literally, every single day, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, we've researched it. Any big day... We're watching crypto videos over the last two and a half years when nobody's interested. We knew a crypto like the back of your hand back then. We're just always engrossed in it because we know at the end it is is some money which we're, we're in it for. So we knew that this is coming. So we, we knew it was what was coming and we were highly educated on it. So we're like, we should be a consultant. We should open up a consultancy for this this build run because it's going to there's so much demand for crypto to people. What, what is this crypto? How do I buy it? How do I do this? So it started as, as a consultancy. The company itself is called Crypto Consultancy Glasgow. So it was just a, we we're thinking of a traditional consultancy company. But as we started to build it, it started to just develop into our own thing. It was just our own creativeness of we should do this, we should do that. 
So it, the initial idea and concept was a traditional consultancy in an office, come in, get a, a consultation on crypto, like a standard consultancy, but then it just developed into whatever we thought was best at that time and it turned into this more online brand, online presence. So, yeah, it was it was demand that, that created it initially. And it really grew arms and legs because that period was was pretty fun to watch as well from 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 the outside or kind of sitting alongside it encouraging it and and i think as well at the time so there could have been hate or criticism but the the mindset of of both of us at that time was just so high mm-hmm. like we we cre- when we created the company the 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 c19 crash had already happened it was after that and the market was on its way up that the so we knew. Happened. so we we knew what was ahead we knew that We've invested for two and a half years in a bear market and we're entering a bull market. So we were just high as a kite this time. We couldn't care less what anybody said, like, because we know what's up next. We're getting some money here. So in that time, we were just so high. We didn't we, we didn't mind if there was any hate or like, you're, you're silly because we weren't silly. We'd been researching it hard for two yeah. and a half years. We knew. So our attitude at that time was like, unbreakable like people could say whatever they wanted at that time but if there was hate comments we just laughed at them because like we were literally laughing because we were going to make we were were making a lot of money at that time um and there was more money on the way so i think we we had a great attitude at that time it it really helped that water off a duck's back it was a perfect perfect analogy it was it was it was it was easy so if we did get hate or bad comments we we loved genuinely it. couldn't care less. We were yeah. like, we, we were, we were enjoying li- it. We were living the dream back then. Like we both weren't working because of the C nineteen stuff. We ended up becoming this brand, starting a brand, and how it all started to take. Let's just even go back to the whole process because the the journey, as shout out to Russ, the journey is everything. And it was so funny now talking about how it came about. It started off in my flat. So I had a, a friend of mine that knows Glasgow had a, a flat in Spears Wharf. You might be familiar. Um, top floor flat was done up like a total like just bachelor's pad shall we say um, great views with a swimming pool there was a gym it was on the so it was like prime prime location for a couple of 20 odd year olds to, to live and no one was doing anything no one was working there was nothing happening so it was the prime time for us to get together and do something C19 had happened we were involved in crypto we'd seen the price go down we'd seen it going back up Eureka moment almost um, and we literally from the moment we decided it we, we decided it I'm sure it was the initial time was driving home from Inverness Aye. we're up seeing one of my friends in Inverness and it was we're heading back 8 o'clock at night whatever it was on like a Wednesday and it was like a Eureka moment and we went back to my flat Nine started ten o'clock and started we've instantly. Got, we've got it all video. There's mm-hmm. everything's documented. We'll obviously make a video on that. At some, some point, point in our lives, life. it's like we went it. home and started Crypto Glasgow. We had no idea what we wanted. We had no idea where it was going. Didn't even have a name at the time. We just knew we were starting this thing, and it was to do with crypto consulting. And that's that's essentially how it started. And it was just from there, it just grew arms and legs every it, day. It really grew arms and legs. And I think the period that m- many people that will be acquainted with you guys will remember is the lives in the yeah. in the flat. Yeah. The, the we've just been down at the gym. You've come upstairs. <laughs> you're yeah. making some food. You've got the kind of purple lighting, lighting as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are just talking about crypto. Every was it every Thursday night you did it. Every yeah. Thursday seven seven thirty. And which is, is actually funny because the first ten lives. No one really tuned in and no. Dick will laugh at this. So <laughs> no one knows this. This is an exclusive. So Cambro exclusive. A Cambro exclusive. So when we were going live, <laughs> no one was asking us questions. Obviously, because no one knew, no one really went live on Instagram at that point. So we were on and what I would do just to kind of get something going rather than just because Dick used to just hold the phone and I would stand and behind him and, and just wait for someone to ha- something to happen. So what I used to do... <laughs> It's so funny thinking back, but it's you had to do it. Would I would read a question that was said on the on the screen? Nothing was there. What do you think of the price of Syscoin? Or what do you think of the price? Basically, I wanted to give an answer for something, but no one was asking me that question. So what do you I think the price of Bitcoin will be, and I would read it like that, so it wasn't so. Like so, yeah, it was just exclusive. to get you started. Uh, you had to do it. Demonstrate you knowledge. Just, just to get content. You had to do it. You had to hustle your way of getting people to. Because that the, the thing is, people didn't not want to ask questions. 
again, the IGTV stuff or the Instagram lives weren't really a thing. So people didn't know to type a message and ask you a question. So I was almost just getting the ball rolling by asking these these questions. So it's whenever we mention it, it's always so funny because um, it literally just did not happen. But, but remember, but remember, you guys had less than ten thousand followers, and you were getting ten thousand streams or nine thousand streams on an IGTV like or whatever. Yeah. Literally, the number of followers you had was pretty much everyone, or people were obviously checking in who didn't follow you. Standard, we know yeah. this to check out your stuff and I, th- I I was like guys ride the wave on this because I'd been on Instagram for a few years by this point Deck had seen what had happened on my page it had boosted and then it kind of just plateaued yeah. and because Instagram starts to choke you out but you guys had just such incredible engagement and so many eyes on the prize because at that point in time it was just obsessive but also the content you were creating was exactly what people wanted to see at that point and the page just went with it I no one had seen what we'd done before uh, I so. think again it was it was because it was so authentic and mm. we gen like we the, it was just the it was just the attitude that we had back then because like if we weren't in that that situation where we'd learned so, about something so much we'd we'd been so educated on a specific topic and we knew it was around the corner like it'd be hard to go live like yep. just f- for two random guys to just go live and speak about a subject like any subject not crypto any subject like it's quite quite a hard thing to do. Like you'll know that yourself through your own journey as well. Like that initial startup phase is pretty difficult, but I feel with us it was easier because we'd been so educated on it and we were open to the criticism, open to people challenges challenging us on the topic. So I feel that helped us kind of take the step to take the leap and just do it. Just go for it. Go live if nobody tunes in. Just go for it. It's content there because what we wanted to demonstrate is that we knew what we were talking about back yep. then. That's the whole point in the lives. That's why Don was asking the questions that weren't there because when we had that live, we would publish it. Then other people could come and watch it and then say, oh, these guys are talking about crypto. They actually know about crypto. So that's why we've we done what we've done. I, I love that period. Genuinely, I thought it was Me too. So it grew good. into such a, it grew into a show. It was really cool because at the start, it was super laid back, like super <laughs> laid back. hats on, music on. The couch, just the, high, the music like, on, like super laid back and making cups of tea. I'm sure my <laughs> cats were there at some point as well. I used to have cats. I'm sure they and, were, and were then in it. Ended like, up, like it ended up a Netflix at, series. In, <laughs> in the office, like a, a full With set. With the mics on, I remember. The mics, people, like, so people looked forward to it. Like it was, it was the craziest thing ever, and people were, oh, I can't wait to get home to watch it, or I'm watching it. If people didn't watch it live, they would watch it the next day, going to their work or whatever it may be. It became a, a there was show. Like, there was like people that were regular commenters as well. Was That's it, right. There was like some guy that would always try and give you hassle, whatever, and like he yep. would get shouted out in the comments and stuff. Just oh yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was good. It was everyone knew it. as it as it grew, everyone grew closer to us. I think they connected with us a lot more because we were just two genuine guys just talking about crypto obviously it helped that crypto was becoming a bit more known at the time as well but the fact that we were just saying it how it is we had the confidence there because we knew enough and it was like long form content where people could connect with you more Mm -hmm. like basically at the start the page was faceless and we were like right we need to build up some trust here so we need to show a face and show a, a personality like come across in longer form content so we we just basically bootlegged everything just worked out everything right we need to show a face so we should do this we should do that and then it just grew over time but showing your your face as well that's another tip like if anyone's starting a business or that show your face and connect in longer form content so that people can say right oh that person does actually know this or know that or that person is genuine um it's easier to make a connection with potential customers, clients, members, whatever it is, uh, they get to know the real you. Which is the strangest thing. You might come across it as well, but if I meet someone in the street or if I'm out somewhere at an event, a crypto event, because we've done those streams and some of the podcasts that we've done as well, people know us without us knowing them. So like you're having this conversation with that person or they're raising points that you've said on that live stream or on that podcast or whatever it may be. And it's, you automatically click with that person because one they've they know you they've bought into you you, it'll be the same with you like they they know you because they're listening to you for over a long long form they they know you it's it's like i know joe rogan i've never met him but i know him like the back of my hand at this point in time as well not only was the page starting to blow up the crypto market was blowing up and your lives were changing financially because you'd been averaging in 
at the lows of the last two and a half years, your returns were rocketing as well. Yeah. What did that feel like at that point in time and what was happening inside your heads? Uh, again, it's like euphoria to an extent, but also we knew it was going to happen anyway. So it's almost like you get excited because you're seeing numbers on a screen change f to the upside, but you're also thinking, well, this is why we're in it. We knew this was going to happen. We, we've we been making money beforehand. We're now making a bit more money. It's now going up. But the same thing still occurred. We were still showing up to be... We were, we were still... That was our personal lives, bearing in mind. Our personal investments. But we were still working, shall we say. And we had a, a right to show up and educate and l help people learn about the industry. So it was great. It was fantastic. We maybe didn't enjoy it as much as we could have if we didn't have the business. But that wasn't really our mission. Our mission was to spread the word and get everyone involved so because we felt comfortable enough to then spread the message publicly like back then when i was when i was speaking to you about crypto like i would share crypto with people that I was close to close friends but at that stage we were just so confident on what it, after we'd been through two and a half years on what was coming next we just had that confidence like just that was what it was total confidence, confidence and the future of, of the market that we could share that publicly we, we could shout it from the hilltops anyone that wants to listen like we'll we'll tell you the message like we'll, we'll spread the the message and we can help you we can help you change your life like it, it was a it's a cool period and we're still doing it just now like the people that that are taking on board the the message that we're putting out now is the same as back 2020 before the market kicked off again um and like what one of the the major ones was a, a, cl a really close friend of mine. Um, I went down, I was helping him with his, his roof. I spent 15 minutes with him. I hadn't seen him in a few years. He had a leak in his roof. I went down, um, I was helping him out. And as we were fixing his roof, he asked me, he was like, what's this crypto thing that you're into? I spent five, 10 minutes explaining to him, saying, look, I've invested quite a bit over the last two and a half years because of this, because of that. This happens, that happens. It, Quick, brief, quick explanation. From that conversation, he went out and invested a, a lot of money. I think it was like 300k. He invested in crypto and he made millions, <laughs> literally millions of pounds he made from yeah. that one conversation. So it's amazing, like, being able to help people that, that you're close to, your friends, but even just helping the, the wider community of people that are... If people put trust in you, it's great to pay them back with good solid information and the things like sharing swiss bog with people being able to share something that will help somebody's journey is is um it's rewarding for us i can see that i can certainly see that financially what were the biggest things that changed for you guys in terms of you'd always liked cars you'd always liked assets i remember you guys used to to, to flip things as well that was one of your your yeah. your, 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 your passions before but before this um what were the biggest things that you kind of opened up to and things changed for you? The main thing, I guess, was cars and watches. That was like our two mm. biggest changes. Because we've always, like, one thing to, to, to make clear as well is before Crypto Glasgow and stuff, we were always making money. We didn't just become rich from crypto or... If you, if you get it wasn't just like daddy's money then we came rich it was we were always doing what we could to make as much money as possible and to have the nice we were, things we were money makers that's that's another thing as well like you get kind of party people or people that spend their time and money differently we were just workers like yeah. we had money because we were just workers we worked every day almost just always working so like that was uh, that Don was, was night shift and you were I doing want to touch on I want to touch on uh, that the night so, shift story. so that's why we we had money like even then we had money we, we were we were interested we've always been interested in money yeah what money brings is like freedom and etc so we've always been interested in it so to touch on the night shift thing you'll like this so to the tiktok stuff again you 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 love the kind of the comments and stuff going back and forward They're well insane. that app is absolutely wild it's, it's crazy so one of the the reels that we had done was deck basically shouted over from far away crypto is a scam and I went into this, this kind of like sad story and how I was scammed by kind of switching a story where I was working a lot and then I made all this money. So on that particular reel slash TikTok, um, I mentioned that I worked in a bank night shift, which I did. And you were 95. And then I quit my 9 to 5. So 
<laughs> because I said nine till five and then I worked in a bank and then at night shift, the comments went nuts. That view that video's got like five hundred K views on TikTok. <laughs> it's up. got hundreds of thousands on uh, Instagram. And a lot of it was because of me saying that I worked in a bank, <laughs> night shift, and then said I quit my nine to five. Nine um, to five was, was just the concept exactly. of what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. It's it's it, it's it's so so funny. And like something will get taken out of context in this particular discussion and yeah. somebody will wet their pants on TikTok 100%. Like with user 12389 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But it, it goes back to the being workers. Like that job I was doing was a night shift role and it's because the, the company we work for audited banks. So I say I worked in a bank. I worked for an auditing company that I, audits banks. Bank. So it's a financial industry. It's easier to say I work in a bank because people's heads fall off when you start. If I was to actually explain what I did, your head would fall off unless you were in that niche so we say so it wouldn't interest them either so it's not worth it well that's it that's why i just work in a bank um so yeah the the, the worker in me in there and the worker in, in both of us was i was working 12 hour shifts the shift pattern there was monday tuesday wednesday seven till seven so seven at night till seven in the morning monday tuesday wednesday however there was opportunity to, to work a thursday night a friday night and a sunday night so i was doing pretty much every week monday night tuesday night wednesday night thursday night Sunday night and just sometimes Literally Fridays, just working working my life away to make that goal of becoming free to an extent and I remember saying in that in that job and for anyone that's watching this that I did work with and I was close enough to I would always say this is it for me because crypto this is my last job this is my last job and but the reason I was saying that was because this was in 2016 this was way before this was way before the reason I was saying that was because it was a, a contract that was going to come to an end at some point and people's next step was, oh, what do I do next? I want to stay in finance. I want to stay in this industry, but what do I do next? So everyone was doing their CMAP for their mortgage. They were doing something financial. I, I actually went down the route of wanting to become an FA, a, a financial advisor, bought the course. <laughs> paid, like a, a paid, <laughs> I, it paid like a grand for the course. You get three books and you get whatever it is. Literally, I still got the books. I think I've just got them as a throwback. Um, like a coffee coaster. Basically, basically. Um but the reason I'd done that was because I almost played into it where it's like, I need to find something next. All these guys are doing C-maps and this and that. I must need to do that because I need to stay in finance. But at the same time, my heart was in crypto. My heart was in the decentralized world of crypto. So I felt dirty at the fact that I'd just paid a thousand pounds for a centralized financial advisory course. Um, but yeah, so again, that, it goes back to kind of stuff we've mentioned in the previous podcasts. That was my last thing, and it was all to do with the confidence that we had, or I had, and uh, because and you making were making money. this money from your twelve-hour shifts, and lots of it was getting ploughed into the majority coins of coins that you believed in. The major that and like Louboutin trainers at the time, that was like my thing, crypto and fancy trainers. Apart from that, you didn't see me work, and sleep, work, sleep. And Deck, you were in you were in the roofing space, but I know that you had some side hustles alongside that. You also had some side jobs alongside that as well. I've, I've got the the old Snapchat videos of you. Uh, <laughs> As a delivery driver, is it not? Yeah, I had deliveries. Um, and again, same as Dawn, the money I was earning from deliveries was straight into crypto. In fact, I made a deal with myself. I don't know if it was 2018 or 19, but it says it was January, and I says, I'm going to do deliveries this full entire year, and every single penny I make is going into crypto. And it's all just mindset and justification, but it's like every penny I'm putting into crypto, if crypto goes to zero cool that is what it is like i'm openly accepting the fact that i can work for a year in this job for nothing essentially for zero i can work in a job for zero or on the flip side it can change my life fin financially so i took that risk openly i knew the risk I, i'm going to work three four five nights a week doing deliveries just after i finish my roofing job finish my roofing job at 4 p.m I'm in deliveries 4.30pm till 11pm and then do the same the next day. Wake up, same again. Just work always like Dawn, just always working. But that was a, a risk I was willing to take. I was like, what's a year of my life? If it does go to zero, I've wasted a year of my life in the off chance that I could become financially free from it. So I took that risk and again, it, it, it was worth taking that risk at the time. I think people can see it's paid off now. Aye. And I, again, I, I, would, I would recommend if somebody's in the same situation like if you're a younger person you haven't got any like as much responsibilities at the time 
you should go for it. What's what's a year? Like mm-hmm. you, if you if you work your socks off for a year and invest that money and it goes totally entirely tits up and you make zero over the course of the year, like what would, it's it's worth it. The risk is worth it. The risk reward is is there. I would say those delivery days were some of the fun ah, funnest exactly. times they ever. Fu- uh, I used uh, to join uh, deck on those shifts. Enjoyed it. Like that was another thing as well. Like we we enjoyed the journey. We enjoyed working. We always we had a a mindset that we just enjoyed the graft enjoyed mm. it like you Keep need busy. to enjoy it or else what's the point like what you actually if you don't enjoy what you're doing what, what you're doing you also knew what it was working towards too so Aye, there's an ex- element exactly. of the carrot and like, the stick w- when i was doing deliveries i would have my phone up here it's probably illegal i don't don't care <laughs> i would have my phone up here and i would watch crypto videos as i was doing deliveries yeah so i would be in autopilot doing deliveries i know where i'm driving but i'm watching a crypto video so i'm working towards crypto whilst I'm doing deliveries on autopilot. I'm dead behind the eyes doing deliveries and I'm working on crypto. So I'm getting paid to learn about crypto is the way I was viewing that situation. That's exactly what happened to me as well. Like a Friday night overtime shift, for example, was time and a half, sometimes double time. Now I was a I was paid by shift. I was paid very well, very handsomely per shift. So the fact that I was getting paid time and a half or double obviously that's another reason why i worked so much obviously but like dex says it was you're getting paid to learn about crypto on a friday night over sh- overtime shift there was 10 people in so bear in mind during the week i'm used to 200 plus on a friday night there's 10 people in over overnight no one's really they're even kind of laid back not wanting to ask as many questions and all i would do is both headphones in phone out again probably against what i was supposed to be doing come after me um <laughs> learning about crypto but getting paid my my wage for and it. That money so was getting pumped into the market. I, yeah. Again as well, so we says on um, recently as well that how me and Don connected like years ago, like we met, I don't know when, 2009. Know. But one of the one of the main connections that me and Don had was rap music. And I've said this before and that might sound like nothing, but there's actually a much deeper meaning behind it. So the music that we were listening to that we connected over was like reinforcing really a really positive message the message it was reinforcing was like be a good man be a be a good man be good to your family be true to your word a provider be a provider really positive messages in these so people can pass it off as our oh, rap music whatever like it's about guns or whatever like that's the specific music that's like that but what we were listening to at the time daily if we weren't watching crypto videos we we're listening to positive music telling us to go out there earn money earn for your family like really you truly are what you consume exactly i've I've noticed that with some of the messages i'll get off the back of the the podcast people that are like oh like i've done this my job or i've changed about this and you're like well that's mad but you can dial into stuff and like i I know that from my own corporate career listening to like different sales podcasts to level up how i present how i speak like there's so many different things that you can consume and like uh, one of the things that I said in my kind of, you know, I do that list every year, 30 things I've learned at 30, 28 things yep. I've learned at 28 and stuff like that. One of them was like, people that listen to the radio are never going to make it. Oh, no. Because oh, who's no. who's letting that input oh, come in? God. Whereas you guys were picking and choosing what was coming into your, your, your ears. Exactly, exactly. Like, see if, see if you, so we were listening to super positive messages every single day. So that's reinforcing it in our minds to be the way that this message is portrayed. But see if you listen to like depressing music every day, what news? chance have you got? Or the news? Like like you switch the radio on and like it's I don't know, like Lewis Capaldi or whatever and he's just like crying all over the song. Like he's he's a Break great up music. he's a great singer, but it's like if you're consuming that depressiveness every single day, like that'll that will reflect on how you how your mindset is. So that's a that's a big key. If you what you are what you consume, as as you says perfectly, you are what you consume. We were consuming a positive me- message every day, so that that helped to our mindset. And again, that's how we kind of connected. We connected through cars and through the music we listened to. We had and the then, same and mindset. And through a quest for financial freedom as well. Mm-hmm. Aye. Aye, it's 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 incredible. We're we're chatting before. In fact, there's a there's a rush lyric that. I think hot home and it's probably perfect for this podcast. I can't remember exactly what it is word for word. We could probably pull it up, but he says that type of thing. He didn't listen to the, li- didn't listen to churches, listen to Kanye, Eminem, Jay-Z, uh, J. Cole, like the, these artists that provided a positive message rather than listening to, I can't even think off the top of my head, like these 
What's that guy that says the Gucci, Gucci gang? What's his name? Lil Pump. <laughs> Run, listen to this Lil Pump or... Like dead behind the eyes stuff. I just, just sounds that don't portray a positive mindset or a positive message. And when you are listening to a lot of these things, a lot of Drake songs as well, Drake's probably a big one that will hit with a lot of people, they might not understand what's actually going on in that song, that lyric. And maybe that's another thing for us as we, we listen really to it listening? and uh, we're listening to it and we're understanding what that person's saying. Now, don't get me wrong, some of the songs that these guys put out might not be um, personal experiences, but it's a, there's a message there. There's Aye. a positive message. So it's listen to that type of music, but also take in what that music's trying to kind of push and understand it's, it's it. It's using your time wisely, like mm -hmm. what you're putting in your brain. We were putting positive me like positive messages in our brain by listening to that music. Like you could listen to, we love every, every music to be fair, like, but like if you listen to dance music, there's nothing there. It's just noise. So you're not really putting any positive messages in your brain. So the purists will be going crazy for that. <laughs> it's but not just noise. But as, a, <laughs> but, but as a percentage of what you're consuming, you, that would be on the lower end for you because what you were what you were optimizing for at that period of time mm. was learning about crypto, listen to aspirational message. That mm. was the the, the key things you listen to. And anyone listening to this can realize that that's how they could alter things potentially definitely if That's you listen to like depressing music a lot you should consider changing it definitely consider changing it because it's you're just reinforcing a negative message in yeah. your brain every single day i would agree i would agree one of the things i'm always interested to ask guests whose financial life has changed is how your aspirations and wants and desires have evolved with that so you guys purchased what i would consider to be like dream cars for a lot of people and you guys always loved cars as well is there a point in time where maybe you reach what you've always been striving for and stop or will you always continue to adapt and strive for a little I bit think more even like regardless of the the amount of money that you make i feel we're still the same we're always just been the same just guys that like cars so regardless of the financial situation well i'm just speaking personally like for me nothing really changes it's it's all the same i like cars if i've got a lot of money i can spend more money on cars if i've got less money i can spend less money on cars so i, I don't think the money or, or a certain amount of money changes or changes the goalposts on anything it's always just the same to be free and free means just yeah free be free on choosing what you want to do what you want to spend your time on rather than being restricted so no, I don't think, for me personally, nothing changes, no matter how much I make, it, nothing changes. It's all, I'm still the same person, and I still get the same things that I like and enjoy. It's Maybe I can just enjoy them a bit more, I can spend more time enjoying them. Hi. I was going to say, it's just opportunity to buy more cars, mm -hmm. like, but going back to like the cars and themselves, the particular cars, I guess it just gives you access to the car that you would always want, like... I've never had two Aston Martins. I I love that brand, and but I also would like a Ferrari. I'd also like an old Astra. Very interested like, in that. Very interesting. And in that. even with that as well, like uh, in the 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 fancy cars, they they just turn into they're just nothing. not normal cars. They turn yeah. into nothing. So it's like I th I think as well that's why the the goalposts don't change. It all stays the same because everything is just the same. Like, you realise that I love old terrible cars as much as I love. Su fancy supercars i love all cars it doesn't it doesn't matter how much it is i, I like them the same i'm a car person yep. so the goalposts definitely don't change for me no n no aspirations change my passions are the same regardless how much i make maybe if i make an obscene amount of money maybe i'll develop a new passion for something fancier boats or something i don't know but as things stand the goalposts don't change passions stay the same one of your registration plates is R8 deck. When you got the R8, was that a pivotal moment for you? Um, yeah. So I got the I got that plate in so long ago, 2010. I don't know, a long time ago when I was a roofer, earning like really low income, but I always had the aspirations of being free, having fancier cars. Um, so I got that then just manifesting like I'm um, one day I will have an R8 so it was cool to tick that box but again I feel I, I don't know about you but I feel everything is just the same nothing really changes like everything's the same 
it is just a car, even though it's a, an R8, it, it's still just a car at the end of the day. Um, I feel everything stays the same, but it was it was a cool moment. Like it was a full circle. I, I achieved it. It was it was cool achieving what I'd set out to do. But um, do you have financial aspirations that are left? Because I know Don will maybe speak more about um, your situation when it's come to like um, like generational wealth and stuff like that, which you've both spoken about before. Mm -hmm. But there are there things that are remaining in your head in terms of boxes you want to tick from a like a a desires perspective? I don't think so. I think it goes down to we're just kind of always going to like cars so we're always going to want the next cool car whatever it may be in terms of like aspirations and what's next i think it's just not nah, it doesn't it's not a negative point but i don't like to try and tie that because then you're always chasing and some people might use that as a positive message you're chasing the the big thing but i think maybe i've just learned that like i've always wanted a fancy car bought an aston martin i was like Oh, it's just a car. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> like, people who tell me I've got the Aston Martin think it's cooler than I think it is, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, I don't know if it's maybe I've just learned it more from experience, not to tie a, a time to the dream. Yes, the or bigger to tie cars, like happiness or anything to a dream. Tie anything to it. It's just enjoy it while you can. And if you want that car, buy that car, enjoy it. You want that house, buy that house. It's enjoy what you want to enjoy rather than oh, I'm going to one day get that. And it's en enjoy the journey as well. Like That was our main thing throughout those times when we were working. So we would work those crazy shifts, but then we would meet up after a shift and go, like, we'd do some random stuff. It would be car-related or, like, sightseeing. We'd go see, we like, history and stuff like that. We'd go see cool sites or, or go... Go to Edinburgh, for example. Edinburgh, that was one of our favorites, traveling, like... go to, like, different cities, go to... America, we would we would enjoy the journey, so we were working super hard, making money, but we we weren't not not doing it, and we weren't just only working. We were enjoying the journey because you need to enjoy the journey, yeah. or else what happens if we were head down? We never lived a life for ten years. Eventually, make money and then die the next day, and you've just wasted ten years of your life working towards something. So the the thing that we lived by was no, we need to enjoy it while we're doing it as well. Because that's the whole point. The whole point is the journey. So, yeah, that that's the journey is everything. The journey is everything. And, and, and during it, you were enjoying being together on the delivery runs, laughing. Honestly, exactly. like yeah. they were some of the most like fun times ever. It was just, it was just an enjoyment because just two of you listening to music or listening to crypto stuff or just chatting about crypto, just having a good time. Um, and I didn't know the areas because I'm from a different part of the city of where where Dyke was from at the time. So I was learning all these new areas again. Some sort of how much history can you get in like Rob Royston, I guess, but <laughs> like just seeing these different parts of the city for me was interesting. Plus you're with your mate just chatting about whatever you were chatting about and listening to music. It was it was so fun. And it's that again, that is part of our journey. Cause at that time we were still in the crypto scene in terms of learning about it. So yeah, the journey's everything, man, for sure. Yeah. Let's go back to that generational wealth piece. Like one of the things that's important when you become financially free is what comes for the next generation, I suppose. Yep. And that's been a big focus, particularly for, for, for you, Don, in, in, in recent times where like the family house has now been <laughs> yeah. purchased and anyone that follows your Instagram has seen the, the, the renovation oh, uh, underway. Goodness. How does that feel to know that you're maybe laying the foundations for the future of your family? Um, I don't know how I feel in, in terms of believing the whole you must create this generational wealth other than just doing what I know I need to do. Does that make sense? And I guess it goes back to me not tying stuff to things. I know that I'm doing that. However, I'm not, right, now I'm I'm doing this because of this. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing it because that's what I enjoy doing. I know what will come of it and I know what's expected of it, but I'm not tying my actions to things. So the house stuff, for example, I know for the future, it's going to be future-proofing the, the family in general. But I'm doing it because we enjoy doing it. As my family, we enjoy doing what we're doing. And the journey, again, the journey of buying the house, renovating the house, renovating the garage, like all this is all just part of the journey of what's what's happening. So Yeah. And one of the things from the the live stream that was kind of iconic was private school coin. I remember <laughs> yeah. uh, I remember you guys talking about that. Having the finances to support your children, the people that come after that, that is that like how much of a consideration is that alongside what you're doing now? I think it's more just be the best that you can and then as best as you are then that supports your family like that's again that's always been me and Don's thing in this journey it's for the family like yeah 
just do as best as you can. Like we're we're focusing solely on doing what we're doing, and it is for the family. Like it is, it's always for the family. Everything that we do, um, but obviously just enjoy the journey as you do it. Um, but if you can do the best that you can personally, your family is going to benefit from from your actions. So I would say the, the main focus is. The main focus isn't, oh, I need to do this for my family. It's like, no, I need to do as best as I possibly can because, like, the family is and the family is the, the motivation behind it. If you know, if they, you they'll, are, be, they'll benefit downstream. The thing Aye. is as well is, like, you are part of that family. Aye. Don't get don't get lost in that. Don't think that, oh, I'm doing it for the family. You're also part of the family. Aye. So you're doing it for yourself as well. And as much as, like, looking after the family is part of it, look after yourself, man, because you can get lost in it. And that's that's one thing you do see a lot of the time is you see the big happy family, but the the main provider might be v- very sad behind the scenes, and it's because he's mm-hmm. forgot or they have forgot whether it's a man or a woman they have forgot themselves in this and need to provide for the family. That's it, that's true. That's a good point. I think that's what I was kind of trying to get across that as long as you're doing the best for yourself, then that will trickle to your family. Extreme. You'll be you'll be as best as you can for your family. So I think concentrate on yourself and then it will benefit your family because it's also not all about money people forget that um a big thing is just being part of your family you can be a very wealthy man and your family hate you or vice versa you could be a very poor man and your family loves you it's more about the family aspect of making sure if you're the best person you can be Mm -hmm. you and your family will be tight well something a lot of people that maybe don't follow the page really closely don't realize is how much you invest in your health and your fitness as well yeah um, jordan's been coaching you both for the last year uh, 18 months and, yep. it's, and it's been really supportive for you and that's enabled you to be good family men good fathers and support what's yep. coming after you as well from that perspective too that's Definitely. another most we, we speak about that whenever we can it's like your fitness is we spoke about that even before we had our, our coach jordan it was always just we were doing the gym again like you said we had a gym in my old flat so there was always an aspect of fitness, sauna. Well, there was also a sauna. There was we would get a walk, whatever it may be. It's like get outside, and you'll know that yourself. You're whether it's rain, snow, whatever. You're outside doing your walks, and people know that about you because you know it's a mental resilience that you're building. Almost, if you're not yeah, being your best, then that's, you're a you're a nuisance to your who you like, your mm-hmm. family, your friends. So, I. Uh, the... The, the and no amount of money changes that I, I completely understand that. and one of the things you guys have brought up continually is the word freedom as well so you actually have the freedom to spend more time with them at an age where a lot of family men are building the wealth mm. and the legacy whereas uh, the way you've I, set up your businesses and your investments you're able to do that yeah there's a big stigma on like people that are that want to make money but they, they don't or maybe they do understand but they just don't want to acknowledge that they understand that making all that money gives you the freedom to spend more time with your family to to provide for your family so like money is the money like money's the goal money's the target a hundred percent anybody that says it isn't they they don't understand because if you don't have money you don't have a house you don't have food you need money so if you say that money's not everything you're kidding yourself on unless you're a i, I don't know well, no, there's, there's no there's no exceptions. Money is essential. So if you're not interested in money, but you've got a family, you're doing it totally wrong. If you're if you're a a man that lives off grid, and you're just living in the woods, I, I totally enough. agree. Money is not everything because I, I could be that guy living in the woods as well. That's that's a cool life. But if you're in society and you've got a family and you say money's not everything, you're doing it totally wrong. Money is everything until you're set up until you can set up your family then you can say money's not everything then you can go off the grid or whatever but yeah money's essential and crypto can can get you that money talking about crypto and money then it's well documented and this is one of the things that i love about the fact that we've done so many podcasts now is that in february 2022 you said when we were together that you weren't particularly excited about eth and you weren't particularly excited about bitcoin at that moment in time because you felt they'd had their time as people who have become financially free through crypto what coins are you excited about at this moment in time <laughs> bitcoin and ETH. <laughs> no to be fair bitcoin uh what what i said back then and was i'd sold my bitcoin in the year previous so i'd sold in february 21 
Uh, and what we'd said back then was, look, it's not looking interesting. It's kind of, it's ran its course. What it's, more can you ask for? It's went from 3,000 to, what was it we sold at? Like 60,000 yeah, or 50, 58, 58 whatever it was. It was. Yeah. What more, like, you're being greedy. If you want to keep going and keep holding on, you're being greedy. You made a lot of money. It's going to come back down to a, to a relative level at around 20K. You're being greedy. It could go up further. But you're being greedy if you want to hold uh, even take, further. Take the wind to an extent. But so yeah, so the way it works is the way crypto works in general, we've said this many a times and we speak about this and like our startup guide and our, our Discord and whatever it may be, anything relative to our business, we always mention this. Market cycles. You've mentioned that a few times as well on this podcast where it's it's great for a few years, not so great for a few years, then it's great again for a few years. It's just how it goes. And we're kinda at that level just now. So it was great for a few years, the past 18 months, two years, it's now not so great. But what comes after the not so great? Great. Great. Exciting. Exactly. And it's Bitcoin so, that you're excited about in particular. Yeah, because the last year, we haven't been buying much and we haven't been excited the last year. Yeah. We haven't been, like, if we're buying, it's small averages in. Because we, we know we're in a bear market, the prices are continuing to come down. But now, the prices are down. Some coins are down ninety plus percent. Like you said, they can go down. Uh, they can go down <laughs> another ninety percent from here, which some of them will. But the the those cooled off. Those projects that I seen that I liked that I was only exposed to when the prices were really high, and I said and I bookmarked them. Like I really like this project, but I'm not buying it now because it's up a ludicrous amount in percents. I'm going to wait and I'll buy it in the next bear market. There's a good few projects like that, like. Um, some of them were like kind of NFT um, music related projects that I was interested in, but I only found out about them peak bull market. So it was like, I'm not buying in peak bull market. That's another key. Don't buy an all time high, regardless of how much you like it. It's just a, a rule. Don't buy an all time high, regardless. So now things are down 90%, 80%. Now they're more attractive. Now I can happily buy. And now I'm getting excited because the havens around the corner. We've had a massive crash. So now um, we're buying more, we're, we're investing heavily, or now we can get more excited and pass the message that, look, this is what's coming next. What happens every single cycle, this is yep. what's coming next. So it's getting to the exciting stage again now. So we're now in that phase we were previously, like uh, um, in 2020, we're in it now, where now you should be researching crypto when the prices are down. Now you should be accumulating crypto when the prices are down. This is the time is now. Now you should not be in CG 2021. Pro. Aye. <laughs> now you should be in CG Pro. Not peak 2021. Well, that's when you should be selling. Yep. You should be selling in peak 2021. You should be. That's when you should be selling. A lot of people entered the market to buy in 2021. If you're a market participant, you should have been selling in 2021 because you've been accumulating the previous years. So if you can start to accumulate now, then when the next peak is. You can just be the one sell, 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 sell. Equally, when you were buying in 2021, if that was you, and that was me at points as well, if you're buying now, you're bringing your average down as well. Exactly. And it means that when it does have its run, my returns will be better than if I just sat on my 2021 investment. Albeit, that's meaning that I've got capital available to put in at this moment in time, whereas some people are over overextended, I understand. I that. actually, so last week, so the, the 30th of December, I done a, a meetup with some of the members, um, called it Coffee and Crypto. Some of us got together at like 10 in the morning, nice, early, just, again, just a chat. Got coffees with everyone, had a chat about crypto. And it's really interesting because you hear some of the people's stories if you meet them, or if you, I've had a consultation call with someone, they maybe tell me the story about buying the top or whatever it may be, but one really stuck out. And one of our members, uh, I had done a consultation with him, I think it was like January last year, and said, look, fantastic time, you're... One of the adopters of Bitcoin, just the usual kind of like amazing you're involved in crypto. However, educate yourself first, learn first, like not giving them financial advice in the sense of don't buy or buy. It was just here, by the way, you're right in what you're doing. However, hold up a bit, learn a bit. So again, this is a story he told me last week. So, and he said, look, I heard what you said, but the prices were going up that much. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. And I won't divulge how much he put in or whatever, but it was a lot of money he put in because he, could, he couldn't help himself. And I get that. I understand that. We've done the same. We've done the same. He, unfortunately, just done it at a much higher price. When we were getting out, he was getting in and it was because of the euphoria. But if 
he, I mean, done the right thing. He, he got a call book done. We spoke to each other. He really absorbed what I, what I took in. And it was interesting hearing him now telling me that story 12 months later after he's experienced the euphoria of buying in. Bear market. The bear market, essentially losing all of his capital he's put in. Well, devalued, not lost, because he hasn't taken any money out. But it's devalued that point. And he's like, look, I get it. I made that mistake. I listened to what you said, but didn't kind of process it potentially and actually dived in and I've learned that lesson. So again, that's a lesson for people that maybe got in last year because of the euphoria. If you sell out, you've lost. If you dollar cost average back in and almost like double down and now that year's taught you, you've gotten at the, I would say the perfect time, as much as you've lost money, you've gotten at the perfect time because you've taught yourself a harsh, harsh lesson that we didn't learn for years because we hadn't experienced it. Uh, and a, another one as well on that, so Don says there, so av- get your average down. So this, this say this guy invested um, t- £10,000 and he bought a coin that was a, a, a dollar. So he's bought all those coins at a dollar. So his average buy is a dollar. So he's spent £10,000 on that coin and his average is one one dollar. He can now invest when that coin's down ninety five percent. He can invest a hundred pound more, and his average can be down to twenty twenty cents. So all the that coin, rather than that coin needing to go back to a dollar for him to break even, he only needs it to go to twenty cents to break even for it for the sake of a hundred pound. So that's there's there's a a lot of power in getting your average down when it's low. When it's low, there's a, there's a massive power in that. And also as well, on the, the coffee and crypto as well, which I found pretty cool, was that there was people there that were saying like, oh, it's so good to be around people that, that, that talk about crypto because it's, it's, a, it's a lonely space. As we say, we were the only ones in crypto back then. We didn't know anybody There's else more now, crypto. but it's still lonely. It, it still exactly. is. Yeah, yeah. So that's the cool thing as well about get joining a community if you are interested in crypto because you do need a community like you mm-hmm. do need or even just one person we've mentioned this before have somebody that can keep you in check because me and me and don we were the same we, there would be times where you're we having negative emotions thinking this is a scam it's got to zero and then the, the other one would be like no it's fine it's you're supposed to feel like that so having someone having a, a community cg pro the perfect community to join having that them there it just gives you that confidence that you're there's a team of people that are all you've got the same goals aspirations that you can that you can join together and get through the hard times rather than try to do it alone because mm. I, I don't know if, if if i get into crypto myself and i didn't know anybody else that done it i don't know if i would have survived in crypto or if i would have just quit because there's so many people that get involved in crypto and quit straight away the prices go down for two months and they just quit and there's probably a main reason and it's probably because they're just in it alone and they've, they've nobody to, to bounce off and, and speak about things because they're in it alone. They're like, oh, this is just price keeps going down. I quit. So many people, we see it so much, people just quit. When I told a friend of mine that you guys were coming back in the podcast for a fourth round, I sent the screenshot to, to Don and you in the group chat and uh, he was asking for, tell me I can get some reassurance by having the boys back in the podcast. And... The joke was, he sh- if he was in CG Pro, he'd probably be more reassured because you see the information on a daily basis. You see thousands of other people that are doing the same thing and believe in the concept to a deeper level than Joe Blogs on Instagram that's maybe really bullish when Bitcoin's at 60k but now doesn't want to talk about it. Exactly. Uh, we need to drive home this point. Hopefully people can take it on board. If you want to make money in crypto or stocks or any anything, you need to buy when the price is low. The, the whole point is buy low sell high if you're buying high you're already like you've missed the whole point like you're buying high so you need to buy low well guess what the prices are now low now you should be buying like really try and register that if you're interested in crypto you must buy low don't wait till the prices are high again to buy you must buy low and guess what prices right now are low Bitcoin is $16,000. It was $69,000. The prices are low now. Register that. Yeah, and that's how excited you are about Bitcoin as well. Because like you say, 
if people rewind, listen to episode 110, you were not excited about Bitcoin. You've been selling out and you were saying it is high right now. It is very, very high. It's had its run. And people are like, no, 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 I'll keep buying Bitcoin. And that's fine if you really believe in the technology and the asset yeah. and you're happy to average in across a period. But if you're if you're happy with it, then you should be especially happy with it now. And that's what I'm saying. I'm, like the last three months where I've been getting it at 16,000 pounds, like little bits of Bitcoin. Bargain. I'm delighted. Bargain, exactly. Yeah. And we had, there was a member at the time at, when Bitcoin was at its high, its peak, the member bought Bitcoin oh. at the top and they mentioned that in the chat room, and like we we seen it in the chat room, we said straight away, look, look like book in for a call ASAP, mate. Like we want to kind of help you out here because we seen that somebody bought, I think it was like two Bitcoin at an all time high. We're like, book Ouch. in for a call, please. Like yeah. <laughs> we need to have a chat because we, we want our members to win. That's the whole point. That's why we created it. We want our members, our community to win. But buying at the absolute top, you have very low chances of, of winning. So on the if if it had, he never booked in for a call, I don't know if they, they sold or not or what happened. But if they did book in for a call, the way that call would have been is like, look, so you've bought Bitcoin at the high. Are you prepared to wait, say, five, six, seven years till you can see that above what you paid for it? That would be the, the question. And if they are, then they can buy at that price. Like if, if they are if they are, they're open to that and they understand what's most likely to happen, if they're fine with that, that's that's fine. Because buying at 69k, I, I don't know if we've done it for, for vibes. I think we've done it at 20k, we bought the all-time high. For vibes, like when Bitcoin yeah, broke its all-time high in 2020 or 2021, we bought it on Coinbase or something like that just for... Just for the the vibes, that we'd never bought much, but we're just like we're, we're buying the all time high just for a. It's just a point. Just, just like add a to the pump. Uh, uh, just a, a, bookmark. a bookmark. So like you can you can still buy an all time high and profit from it, but it's just harder. You need to have a longer uh, time horizon. Yeah, yeah exactly. My yeah. time horizon on crypto is really really long, so I'm quite comfortable to uh, if if Bitcoin went to a hundred grand in two years time, I'd probably still be averaging in on a monthly or weekly basis because yeah. that's how I'm wired to look at it. To yeah. some extent. I think the benefit you've had, and again, you've done your own research, but the benefit you've had is you've had multiple podcasts with, uh, we've we've um, been able to discuss it, not directly with you, but because you've been hosting the, the podcast and letting us spread the message, you've then indirectly kind of taken that in. Yeah, where, absolutely. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I've sat in the Discord and then in CG Pro and whatever guys it's in and, and, and benefited from the information and just been quite calm about the whole situation. Exactly. And it's, it's one thing I wanted to, not to try and sound like, you should be doing this with our business. But the consultations, as we've kind of mentioned, like the minute people, because I tend to do quite a lot of them, I enjoy them because I'm speaking to someone that's put their trust in me, someone that's coming to me for that for that information. We want to help. We, we genuinely want to help. The, the, the calls are booked for 30 minutes, but they tend to always be 45 an hour, whatever it may be. And I don't mind that because unless I'm booked back to back to back, I don't mind that because I know I'm getting that positive message and I can tell that I'm making an impact on that person. The amount of people that I've spoke to after I've done a call with them, six months, in fact, there's that guy I spoke to last week, prime example, he just done it in reverse, but he knew, he knew that. So one thing, I, again, I'd like to kind of home in on is we are a consultancy. We are wanting to help people as much as possible, whether that means joining the Discord or getting a direct phone call with me it it just it that half an hour of your of your life can change can, uh, and it can has make a massive difference. I've got a track record of people that have made a positive uh, change in their their mindset on on crypto, or and they've made made or saved. Or I, that's another big one: saved from a potential scam, or potentially selling out, or buying the wrong thing, or whatever it may be. And the way we we would do it in the college, it's not like you should do this. It's just so you know, this is this is what you could be doing. It's, it's more about a, it's an educational call, an educational piece. It can also just be a Q&A, but to home in on it is, it's so important to speak to someone with the experience. Yeah, if you're, if you're, because we've seen it so many times, people, I, what, I've got 20 grand to invest, what should I do? Like on questions box on Instagram, it's like, should probably book in for a call, mate. Like for the sake of the price yeah. of a call, if you're willing to invest 20 grand blindly on whatever, you should be booking in for a call and speaking to a professional in any in any industry. If you're going to invest a lot of money, you should probably speak to a professional before you do it. 
Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. In any other industry, probably people would consider it. There's lots of industries where they don't like fitness, for example. I always find it hilarious that people just go charging off and do absolutely mad stuff off, yeah. the, off the back of no research whatsoever. But yeah, engage into the professionals, build community. I was going to ask you as a, a, a bit of a wrap-up, guys, what parting wisdom would you provide to somebody who's a little bit worried during this particular market? Be excited, flip it on its head because as Dex mentioned in this in this just recently, it's this is the time that reminds us of the times we were getting excited for in twenty twenty. So I guess it's that. It's it's not so much as start to worry. I guess it's a, a message that we've always said. It's like don't let the others change that mindset of what you've got. The end goal is financial freedom. So keep that in mind. Don't let the news or the prices or the FTX scandal think, oh, it's over. That's it. It's done. Don't give up on yourself. It's a mental mindset, like, drive that you must have. And also be prepared for even worse news to come after this. That the This negative narrative that's happened doesn't mean it's the end. It could get worse still. So st always be prepared. Like we said this throughout the bull market, always be prepared for the absolute worst. Always be prepared and always be open to the fact that there can be the worst possible news you can ever imagine. Like we were trying to imagine, like just imagine what could possibly happen, what could possibly be the story. Nobody knows, so you just need to be open to absolutely anything can happen, but having have a long-term mindset that no matter how bad it gets, there's brighter days ahead. There's always brighter days ahead. Just stack Stack, stack. You can't go wrong with stacking, especially after uh, 80, 90, 95% correction. Strong wisdom to wrap up on, guys. Pleasure to have you on as always. I'm sure the listeners have enjoyed it as well. Last time we pretty much broke Apple in, in podcasts and Spotify when people were leaving five star ratings. So let's do the same again if you're enjoying this one. And I'll be back to speak to you all again very, very soon. <laughs>